Hi folks, it's Warno. Got some setup and troubleshooting instructions for Mach 3. Uh, this is for people with Dexter, but a lot of this, actually most of this applies uh, whether you're using Dexter or an original PR8210, uh, which is what I'm doing right now. I've got one running down here, and the uh, game is playing fine. So, we'll start with the easiest case, which is you have a game that's already working with a PR8210 and you want to convert it over to Dexter. Uh, but I imagine a lot of people are trying to get one running uh, that isn't already working with a player. And I will show you a number of things you might run into that will keep it from working and what to do about them. So let's get started. So I've shut off the game and I've shut off the player. Let's take a look at the other side. There's a remote control connection that lets the game control the uh, player, left and right audio, and you need to keep track of which one is in left and which one is in right, because those need to be the same on Dexter. And there's a video out, which is not quite the same as your typical video out. I guess this player is from before they'd really standardized on RC Ajax for composite video. So let's take a look at how those get connected up to Dexter. Basically we have the same connections. We have left and right audio, we have video with a different connector. And over on the other side is the remote control jack. So let's start there. Let's plug in the remote control. You want to make sure that's in all the way so it's not kind of sticking out a little bit. And let's turn it around. Uh, the left is usually the black, and the right is usually the red. But depending on what wiring is in your cabinet, if it's not original or if it's been reversed or played with over the years, those might not necessarily match. Now, to plug the video in, you need an adapter, which should have been included with Dexter. If not, I think you can get one at Radio Shack or off of eBay. Okay, so plug the adapter into Dexter and then plug the video cable into the adapter. It's a little easier to do in that order, but you can do it either way. You also need power for Dexter from the uh, Dexter power supply. It goes in on the top right here, so we plug that in. And very important, you have to have the mode set to PR8210. So you've got the mode switch down here you want to, right now it's set on LDV 1000. You want to press that as it cycles through the different options until you get to PR8210, which is actually lit up right next to the jack that it plugs into. And the pulse light should be flashing. If that's not flashing, then it's not getting video from the Raspberry Pi and things aren't going to work well. But that's a whole separate set of uh, troubleshooting procedures. So if you're at this point, your pulse light is on, your PR8210 light is on, and you've got the Mach 3 laser disc image loaded, then you're good to go on Dexter. So let's fire that up. And there we have it. We have a track mode with laser disc video. Now there's an easy way you can tell if you have your audio cables reversed. When it gets uh, a little way into the uh, track mode, you're, you're gonna start hearing the, the target signal that's supposed to go to the target decoder. So if you start hearing this tone, then uh, you know you've got your audio cables reversed. So 
So there's still one more thing you have to do before you know for sure that everything is working. You have to actually start a game and uh, see if the targets appear. If the targets don't appear, you get a message that says disk error, stay put. And uh, that means your audio cable for the target data is either disconnected or uh, your target data decoder needs to be adjusted, which was probably the fussiest part of, uh, of these games. But you can, you can see I'm getting targets on, uh, on things that are synced up with the video, so we know the target decoding is working. So if you get to this point and you don't get any stay put errors, then you're in good shape. So let's talk about a few things that uh, may prevent you from getting to that point. Something that's very hard to diagnose if you haven't run into it before, that can cause all kinds of mischief and mayhem with starting up and getting frozen in various parts, is the, uh, the slam switch, which normally is on the coin door and triggers if someone kicks it so that uh, it just re resets the game at that point. But if that switch is missing or disconnected, then the game just continually resets. So right now I have my uh, slam switch just hanging. So the way you can tell that the slam switch is uh, not working correctly is you get a strange sound on startup. Uh, you either get a kind of a looping, kind of scratchy sound, or you get a sort of an error type sound, which uh, it would normally make when someone kicks the game. So normally you should not hear that. And the game will just hang on start disk. It won't get past this point until you actually uh, ground out that switch. So if I ground out that switch, then it uh, will continue and boot and everything is fine. And note that the test mode works fine with that slam switch uh, disconnected. So why don't I show you in the test mode what that uh, what that switch should actually look like. I've got a test mode switch here. And in test mode, if I go to control panel, whoops, control panel, uh, hold. Uh, notice that the uh, all the other buttons are blue, but the slam switch is yellow. That's because the slam switch has to be held down. If it's not connected, it's going to look blue like all the other ones. And slam should definitely not be blue. It should be yellow. Another way you can get stuck on start disk is if there's no video getting to the Mach 3 board set from the Laserdisc player or from Dexter. And the simplest reason for that could be just the cable is not in. Uh, which is how I've simulated it here. But you also may want to check the uh, kind of the wiring input panel where uh, there's some RF shielding that all the Laserdisc connections go through. You want to make sure all these connections are on solid and they're all in the correct order. Occasionally people will move them around. So uh, if, the, if the game wasn't working when you got it, then uh, it's not guaranteed that these are all in the correct position. So at any rate, once you have video, which uh, I will plug this in, the screen turns to black and it says seek frame. And uh, then uh, if the frame decoder works, then everything's fine. Those are two ways you can get stuck on start disk. The slam switch and a lack of a video signal getting to the boards. Uh, again, just check the connections. Uh, these cables are fairly old and brittle on these games by now. All these board-to-board -board interconnects and the ones on this RF shield and even the, the header connectors for all the power and controls and things. Those are uh, notorious for weak solder joints and, and oxidized connections. So, you know, if you have a, a meter and you can test those, make sure that they're all working before you get too far into other things. That's often a good idea. A lot of people will remove this board and re-solder, reflow the solder on all of the connections on the back. If uh, you have a lot of flaky connections on there, then that's sometimes the best uh, the best approach. So once it's detected video and the screen background changes from blue to black, it's going to send a search command for frame one of the disk, and then it waits to see that frame number 
coming back in the video signal through the frame decoder hardware. And there's a couple of reasons that you might get stuck here. And the simplest one is that the remote control connection isn't working going to Dexter, so Dexter never received the search command. And in this case, I've simulated it just by unplugging it. If Dexter didn't get the search command, then it's going to just hang there with seek frame and it's not going to show any additional information. The other possibility is that uh, Dexter is searching to the frame and displaying it, but the frame decoder hardware in the game is not detecting it correctly. If the frame decoder hardware is not working correctly, you'll see something like this. You'll see that it says it's seeking to frame one and the actual is what it's reading back in the video signal. So it's not recognizing it as frame number one. It's just getting garbage. Now on the Mach 3 hardware, the frame decoder is actually on this board, but the control to adjust it is on the color sync board. And it's this control right down in here. And if I put a screwdriver in that and I turn it, uh, you should see at some point it's going to notice it. And then the game's going to start. So that's not the proper way to adjust it. That was just kind of a demonstration. But let's take a look at how you would set that correctly using the test mode. And the way you get to that is uh, move down to video tests and then to frame decoder, and then to still frame decode, do the still frame first. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna search to one, two, three, four, five, and then it's gonna show you what it is reading back from the video. And you can see in this case, it's saying it's one, two, two, oh, nine. So the control, even though it worked enough to get past the startup screen, it isn't gonna work reliably enough to, uh, to run the game. So you need to do a finer adjustment of that control. So if I get my screwdriver on there and let's turn it counterclockwise. And there now it's locked on to one, two, three, four, five. Dexter has a really strong clean signal for this. So the range of this control where it works is pretty wide, but you want to kind of cycle through that whole range leave it kind of in the middle of the, the working range. So once you've got that solidly showing one, two, three, four, five, uh, there shouldn't be any drops in the beep at all and the numbers shouldn't change at all. If you get to that point, then you can go to the play frame decode test. And what that's gonna do is go back to the same point and then it's gonna seek forward one frame at a time and show you what, uh, again, what frame numbers are being reported back. So what you should see is a steady count from about 12,500 and the, uh, also a steady beeping sound. There shouldn't be any significant dropouts in it. It's okay if there's a, a momentary interruption every once in a while, but, and, and with a real PR8210 player, it's almost guaranteed you'll get a few, but uh, you wanna have as few as possible. Now, in addition to the frame number decoder, there's also an audio track decoder. The right channel of the disc has uh, like a data signal that contains all of the target information so that uh, all the, the targets that appear on screen during the game are actually read from that audio signal. And there's a whole decoder circuit for that as well. And let's go into the menu for that. That's still gonna be under video disc tests. Uh, you go to audio track decoder. Now, the if this is not set properly, the most common thing you're going to see is either right when it starts a game or s shortly after, it's going to keep saying disk error stay put. That means that it's it it had some it, it thinks that there was some problem with that spot on the disk, and it couldn't read the target data. So what it does is it skips ahead a little bit and starts to uh, starts to play again. So let me go to the audio track decoder menu. Go to, the first thing you want to do is just test it. And you go to audio check some test. And that's going to search to frame 2318, which is the beginning of the gameplay. And then it, uh, it reads that target data and it tells you how many errors it finds in it. So you can see there's a number that says one or two errors. 
and it's always going to see a few errors. I think there's actually a mistake in how the, the data is encoded on the disk, so it always shows at least one or two. Even with a perfect player and a perfect disk, you, you never see zero for that. But uh, if it's one or two, that basically means it's perfect. If it's something like four periodically, that's okay. Uh, but if the numbers jump any higher than that, then, uh, and again, let me simulate that a little bit. Maybe just unplug this temporarily. See, uh, the number of errors jumps to 49, and then now it's telling me use the audio track decoder. So if it always says one error or two error and never really goes above that, then, uh, and it never gives you that message, use audio track decoder adjustment, then leave it right where it is. That means it's, it's working just as it should. But let's take a look at what you have to do to actually can uh, actually calibrate that. And there's a section in the Mach 3 manual that tells you how to do it. But the basic process is you go to the next option, which is the audio track decoder adjustment. And oh, it even tells you right here. That's right. It tells you there's a jumper. You have to uh, you have to move, and that is uh, jumper JP3 to JP2 and adjust R6 until a steady tone is heard. So if I look on here, I've got JP3 and JP2, so let me move that. And adjust R6 until a steady tone is heard. Tap to start. So you can hear there's, there's a, a sort of a pulsing beep there. Uh, it's not as consistent as it was in the uh, in the frame decoder test. So let me see if I can actually improve that a little bit. Uh, R6 is the one right next to it. So let's just adjust that a little and see what happens. Nope, it just disappeared altogether. So that's really as good as this audio decoder board gets. And as you could see in the test menu, uh, the error count was very low and it works perfectly in game. So that's basically what you want to look for. Okay, it says tap select to continue. So if I just tap it, then it gets to the next step, which is to adjust R39 until a steady tone is heard. And then when you're done, you put the jumper back and you continue. So let's find R39. R39 is this one right here, the one closer to the to the red jack. So let's give that a little twiddle. No, nope, that's really as good as it gets. So that's that I would consider normal behavior. That's that's typical for these boards, and works very well in the game once uh, once you've got it adjusted to this point. After you do that, remember to uh, put the jumper back. Now we can exit test mode, and it will restart, and everything should be good at that point. And there we go. So I hope this has been helpful for some of you for getting your Mach 3 working again. Uh, feel free to uh, post questions in the comments or on the, uh, the Dexter forum on the Daphne BBS. So uh, good luck and uh, catch you next time. Thanks.